Last bit we're going to be thinking about with vectors. Ekrem, we've started now, OK? So last thing we're going to do with vectors, and actually this will come looping back around again when we look at mechanics as well, is, um, is some, basically some applications of how vectors get used in mechanics. There's really nothing new here at all. And when we look at things in mechanics, I will be using some of these. So they kind of get taught when we do pure. They also get taught again when we're doing mechanics. So I may just get you to do maybe one or two questions from an exercise, but not on the whiteboards in a second, OK? So we've got a few different things here just to remind us. Um, it says here, out of displacement, speed, acceleration, force, mass, and time, all of them, apart from uh, mass and time, are vectors. And I suppose, really, we shouldn't really have called it speed. What should I have called it instead of speed? Yeah, I should have called it velocity. Velocity is something that is a, a vector kind of quantity. Um, and all of these things can also act in three-dimensional space. So a force doesn't have to just be in two dimensions. It can be in three dimensions as well. If I wanted to find out the size of this force, I would do what to it? I would find the magnitude of it. It's not mg, but the magnitude. So to do the magnitude of this, it would be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 26, and that's root 26 newtons. Because this is mechanics, it's probably likely that we would take that from root 26 and we'd probably write it now as 5.10 newtons. That's more the type of thing that we do when we're doing mechanics, okay? Acceleration, again, if we want to take the magnitude of the acceleration, it'll be one squared plus one squared, which is root two, or 1.41 meters per second squared. So basically, we're just saying here you can take the magnitude of these things. Displacement, though. Displacement actually has a different name when it becomes a scalar. What does it become when it becomes a scalar? It becomes the distance. So the distance that would have been traveled here would be the square root of 12 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is just 13. And that would be 13 meters. Velocity, when it um, becomes a scalar, changes to speed. If that changes to speed, again, we just do the magnitude on it. And we get uh, the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared, which is 5 meters per second. I guess what the thing to notice here, this is where people lose marks in these kinds of questions, is they will say something, there'll be a vectors question, and they will say calculate the speed after five seconds. And what people will do is they will calculate the velocity at five seconds, and they will forget that the last stage that you need to do is to actually find the magnitude of those things. So don't be that person that just thinks they finished the question. Make sure that if they're asking you about distance, or if they're asking you about speed, or if they're asking you about magnitude, make sure that at the end of it, you actually end up by taking the magnitude of that three-dimensional vector that we've got there. A very short thing that we're going to have a look, I think it's just one example here. We have got, um, just again showing how vectors can now be used within mechanics questions, and obviously when we do mechanics more fully, you will see how then vectors are, are more incorporated within it as well, and why this topic is, is actually more important as like a skills topic than a standalone topic. So it says here that a particle of mass 0.5 kilograms is acted on by three forces, OK? Just going to write that down, that the mass is 0.5. And we've got three different forces that are acting here. And it says to find the resultant force acting on the particle. Well, normally when you have vectors, what do we say the resultant vector is? Yeah, good, you add them, good. To normally find the result of two vectors, you add them. Let me just give you a bit of a, a recap to stuff from year 12. I'm teaching this to year 12 at the moment, so I keep getting confused what I've said to you and what I've said to them. The resultant of A and B is this one here, which would be A plus B, okay? So we've got three different forces that are acting in three-dimensional space, pulling at something in different angles. The overall result of that will be the forces added together, okay? So the first part for part A is that the resultant force, which I'm going to do underlined with an R like this, will be F1 plus F2 plus F3. And I think it's better. What do you think I should do with those three forces? What's a better way of writing? Good. We're going to just put them as columns because we know that that's much nicer. So we have 2 minus 1, 2 plus minus 1, 3 minus 3. 
This is always where the mistakes get made when you copy something down wrong, but it looks like we've copied them all right. So the resultant force R is 2 minus 1 plus 4, which is 5, minus 1 plus 3 minus 3, minus 1, 2 minus 3 minus 2 is minus 3. So this is the resultant force. Kind of makes sense that overall, the first force and the third force are kind of pulling it in the x direction, and the second force is pulling it backwards in the x direction. So overall, in that kind of tug of war, it's five in the x direction, and it's just dealing with each of those directions separately because they're all perpendicular to each other. So it then wants us to find the acceleration of the particle, giving your answer in the form pi plus qj plus rk. Yes? If you found the magnitude of the force, uh, So if we found them, you're right, if we were to find the magnitude of the force, we're then going to get stuck at being able to put the acceleration in vector form. So we're actually going to do this one without putting it into its magnitude form because they want the acceleration in vector form. So for part B of the question, if I just get rid of this, we're actually going to do this to show that F, I've written B underlined, um, F equals MA can also now become a vector equation if the force is a vector and the acceleration can also be a vector. Why is the mass not being underlined? It can't be, it can't, doesn't have a direction, it's just the mass, it's a scalar. So we can now say F is actually the resultant force. We can now say that 5 minus 1 minus 3 equals the mass times the acceleration. Remember the mass was 0.5. So now all I need to do to both sides of this equation, divide by 0 0.5, or which is the same thing as just doubling it. So I get 10 minus 2 minus 6, which is 10i minus 2j minus 6k. And the reason I wrote it back in that form is because they were pretty specific about writing it in that form. They really wanted to see it in that form. Now, we're going to do what Ekram said. We're now going to find the magnitude of the acceleration. Okay, we're going to find the magnitude of the acceleration. So what we need to do for this, how do you think I should say magnitude of the acceleration? What should I write down to say that I'm doing that? Well, the, modulus. the modulus lines. I can either say the magnitude of the acceleration, or I could have just written A equals not underlined. But if you're that person who's not underlining your vectors, you probably need to do it like this. Okay, you should underline your vectors. So magnitude of A, pretty boring. Square root of 10 squared plus 2 squared plus 6 squared, which is 2 root 35. Can I have that as uh, three significant figures as well? 11.8 meters per second squared, because it's acceleration there. Okay. Then it's just you know, showing that we can also do mechanically kinds of questions from this. It says, given that the particle starts at rest, find the distance traveled by the particle in the first six seconds of its motion. Was that a stretch or a hand up? Well, you're going to ask now. What do I need to do for this? <laughs> SUVAT, exactly. So for part D of the question, I'm just going to do SUVAT. I know that my value of U is zero. zero. My value of A, I'm going to use the, the non-rounded version. I'm going to use 2 root 35. Um, what else do I know? Time is, Time is six. As soon as you've got three things with SUVAT, that's enough. You only need three and then you think the thing that you want. The thing that you want is S, S equals UT plus a half AT squared. U is zero, so we just get a half times two root 35 times six squared. Whack that in the calculator. 36 root 35, which is two, one, three meters to three significant figures. Nothing new, really. So what do you think would be, um, sorry, you had a question first, Muhi, yeah? I was going to say, how much of all of this, like, how many marks is that? So I think this would be two marks, one mark for adding and then a second mark for the accuracy. I think this would also be two marks for knowing that you can set up an F equals MA and then also getting it correct, that's four marks. This would also probably be maybe one mark or two marks. Let's say it we're at five marks so far and then probably two more marks here, so probably seven mark kind of question. It's a pretty straightforward kind of question that we'd have here. I suppose, can anybody think what could change about D? What could be different about the wording in D that might mean we had to do something different? What was that? Yeah, if it didn't say distance, if it said displacement, what would we need to do differently in the question? It would have to be in vector form. So we would actually use this 
version of A, um, and something to do with would do SUVAT would be in vector form. Okay, we haven't quite done SUVAT in vector form. We will do that later on in mechanics, but you can do this formula here can all change into vector form. Wouldn't it form. just be three multiplied by a? Wouldn't it just be three multiplied by a? Because you would get half of three. Not for the displacement. It would be if it wasn't a. If it was velocity, you could just do the six times oh, that. But you yeah. can't. You can't do that for for this. Yeah. I, actually, I suppose what you're saying here. I so yeah. I do see what you're saying. Yeah. It would just be three multiplied by. By a, yeah. Maybe it wouldn't. I'm a bit confused by what we just said there. Ignore what I've just said. Okay, so I actually don't think, I would much rather us now move on to doing mechanics. I don't think you need to do any practice on these kind of things. Yeah, we're starting mechanics, so it's quite nice that this example will kind of like lead straight into this. Um, one thing that I just thought I would point out is that exercise 12D is printed in your vectors booklet. Um, so it's there for some practice. Also, what you've noticed is that at the end, I always um, mention about the mixed exercises. I always print the mixed exercises as well, so that if you're looking for like additional revision, you can always look at the mixed exercises on those topics to see if there are any like extra questions that will help you out for those kind of things that we've got. Okay, but pretty simple. I don't. I don't really want to spend any more time on these ones. Okay.